Hello there, and welcome back. As my followers on Facebook and Instagram already know, most of my commission work consists of pet portraits, painted on natural stones and rocks. Today, I'll be painting Nittany. Isn't she cute? This is a quick run-through of my process of transferring images onto rocks before I paint them. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on exactly how I do this. Now figuring out exactly what to paint first, or how to start, is one of my biggest challenges. When I was a kid, I would go straight for the eyes. Oh, well that sounds wrong. I mean, it's accurate, but still sounds bad. With Nittany here, I decided to start with her ears. In the reference photo, she was backlit so she had this really cool glow around her. That was what drew me to the photo in the first place, though I quickly realized that this may actually be a pain in the ass to paint. So I chose to paint her base colors first. Yeah, you'll see me bounce between the really cool glow to the rest of the painting a lot. This is called avoiding the issue at all costs. I may or may not be guilty of that in most aspects of my life, but, uh, yeah, anyway. This is when I got smart and propped up the rock. It's also when I started to realize that I may actually be painting Rocket Raccoon. But don't worry, I can pull this off. I mean, no, I don't have an actual plan, but... Listen, Rocket, I don't need a plan. I got this. See? No more raccoon. This is clearly a painting of... an owl. Damn it. As cute as she is, Nittany's color proved to be a challenge to get just right. And so did that cool glow. You can see it in her eyes that she is not amused with me. Okay, that's enough out of you, fuzzball. Now for these portraits, once I get the base colors down, I almost exclusively use liner brushes to finish the paintings. To get the thin, precise lines of detail and individual hairs, I thin my acrylic paints down to a watery consistency and lightly drag the brush across the surface to place the marks. There may be other ways of doing this, but for my personal style of painting and the realistic detail my clients come to me for, I'll stick to my liner and stubborn patience. It goes by pretty fast, but you may have noticed sometimes I lift mistakes with paper towels. That's because acrylics dry quickly, but that makes them pretty forgiving. If you catch a mistake while the paint is still fairly wet, you can easily wipe it away with a damp cloth or paper towel, or even a wet finger, without damaging the layer underneath. I tend to use my fingers a lot to make quick changes to my paintings probably because my go-to medium when I was in high school was pastels. My teacher in high school would try to force me to use anything but pastels, but they were my comfort medium for years and years. I never thought there would ever be a day that I prefer painting over pastels, but I really do prefer it now. Of course, I also never thought that I'd be making most of my living from painting dogs on rocks either. But here I am. The way I got into rock painting is definitely an interesting story for another video. Now for my favorite part. It's the magic that brings almost any portrait to life. Those tiny little reflections of light in the eyes. This is probably why eyes are my favorite part to create. If you get them just right, they make everything else look better. If you're interested in commissioning your own pet portrait, let me know. Maybe your pet will be the next star of their very own video. And with a few more nitpicky details, this little girl is ready for a signature and a clear coat of Krylon. Say that ten times fast. This seals and protects the finished piece. Here she is, cute little Nittany, all ready to go. Thanks for watching.